Ever stare at your screen trying to figure out why your trade lost even though price never hit your stop loss? This is the video for you. Hey everyone, I'm Jenks, this is The Trading Floor, and welcome to another episode in our Back to Basics series. Today, we're talking about spread, what it is, why it is, how to keep an eye on it in TradingView and MetaTrader, and towards the end of the video, I'll give you some tips to avoid taking unnecessary losses due to spread in the future. To get a grasp on what the spread is, first we need to discuss the bid and ask prices. On the other side of every long or short you place is a market maker taking the opposite position. When you buy or go long, you're entering at the market maker's ask price. This is the lowest price they're willing to sell for, and since you're buying, they're selling. Conversely, if you're looking to sell or go short, you'll need to be aware of the market maker's bid price. When selling, the bid is the highest price the market maker is willing to pay for the asset being traded, and since you're selling, they're buying. I want to take this time to remind you that every trade you conduct is in fact two transactions. When you open a trade, you have to close that trade. If you don't close it, that's called investing, and that's a topic for a whole different series. So if you're going long or buying, you need to be aware of the ask when opening the trade and the bid when closing the trade. Stop losses and take profits for long positions are pending short orders and shorts get triggered by the bid price. Conversely, stop losses and take profits for short positions are pending long orders and longs get triggered by the ask price. Now that we've got a grasp on the bid and the ask, understanding the spread is easy. It's just the difference between the two prices. The difference in price is one way market makers are compensated for inheriting the risk in providing liquidity to the market and holding inventory. They play a crucial role in maintaining an orderly market by facilitating trades and ensuring that there are buyers and sellers available for most assets during regular trading hours. They aim to maintain a balance between buying and selling to minimize their exposure to price movements while making a profit from the spread. If you don't already have the bid and ask lines visible on your charts, let's fix that right now. In trading view, right click, go to settings, then go to symbol, then click this checkbox here. Sometimes you may need to adjust the colors to get better visibility on your price lines. There's also a checkbox on the scales tab that will make the bid and ask easier to see. On MetaTrader, it's very similar. Right click on the properties and go to the show bid price line and show ask price line under the show tab. Also on MetaTrader, you should be able to see the spread for each asset in your watch list. If you don't, right click and find bid, ask, and spread under the columns menu. Okay, we know what the spread is. We know why it exists. We know how to keep an eye on it. Now, how do we limit our losses to it? First and foremost, trade assets that correlate with the Forex session you're going to be trading. The spread for Euro pairs is much more reasonable during European trading hours as opposed to during Asian session. Off hours, Forex pairs or indices could potentially have such high spreads that it makes the asset borderline untradeable during that time. Second, when setting a stop loss for your trade, take a quick look at the spread and add that number to your stop loss. For example, if your stop loss would be 20 pips because that's the distance from your entry to the swing high or low, go ahead and add the spread to that to ensure you're protected in the event price comes near your stop loss but doesn't touch it. Spreads can fluctuate, but it's generally within reason unless there's news. Speaking of which, number three, stop holding trades through high impact news. If you don't know how to find high impact news, keep an eye out for that video. But the rule of thumb is to close out your trade a few minutes before news hits. News with high economic impact causes a lot of volatility with the spread over a short period of time. Last up, if you plan on keeping a trade open past the end of New York Forex session, be prepared for the spread to widen drastically. We call that time of day the daily Forex rollover or spread hours because of how volatile the spread becomes. Spread hours kicks in at 5 p.m. or 1700 New York time. To translate that into your time zone, come down to the bottom right corner of TradingView and click on the time. Find New York, drop a vertical line at 1700, then go back to your time zone. During this time, any open positions are rolled over to the next trading day and any interest or swap rates associated with the currency pairs are applied. Keep in mind that specific brokerages may have slight variations in their rollover times, so it's a good idea to check with your broker for the most accurate information. Many traders won't hold past New York Forex session because of this, and while that can be good advice in and of itself, I encourage people to be extra diligent in their data collection to see if their trades can survive being held overnight. But data collection is a topic for another video. 